right, this is John Cullow with GrowingYourGreens.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. And today, of all places in the world, I'm here in Santa Rosa, California for the National Heirloom Expo taking place September 5th, 6th, and 7th. So by the time you guys are seeing this, the expo has been long gone. And I'm gonna show you guys what I can on this video in the expo. But unfortunately, you know, seeing it on video and being here is two different things. I would encourage you guys to check out the heirloomexpo.com. I'll put a link down below to their website so you can be notified when the new 2018 event will be happening. Each and every year, it's always a little bit different. Some things stay similar, but they always have new uh, vendors and exhibitors and exhibits and uh, displays. In any case, uh, what I'm going to do in this episode is try to summarize it the best I can and show you guys just a glimpse of what you missed uh, if you would have been here. So anyways, uh, let's head inside the uh, Heirloom Expo, uh, the world's pure food fair. This is all about eating heirloom, natural, organic, non-GMO foods and, you know, uh, and sustainability. And so I come every year, and this year I actually spoke, I got a speaker badge, and hopefully my video will make it online. I had a camera malfunction, and I wasn't standing in the shot the whole time, but I think it'll be all right. <laughs> so first thing I'd like to do is actually, I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys in the exhibit hall, and this is where the majority of the different heirloom fruits, vegetables, and seeds and things are on display. I'm gonna try to do my best to show you guys the parts that I like the most. There's so much to see here. I would encourage you guys also to check some of the links down below, I'll put links to the previous year's heirloom uh, expos that I visited so you can kind of see like what it looks like because every year is a little bit different. They're gonna have different crops and whatnot. And unfortunately, in this video, I can't show you like the whole thing, every single table. So uh, come in and I'll show you what I can. So every year inside the exhibit hall, they always have like a pile of squash. And you know, one of the things that's really cool that you know you don't often think about is you know, squash was a staple food for many cultures around the world, literally. And you know, over in this area, they have like several tables, I don't know, one, two, three, like so many tables, and there's so many different kinds of heirloom squashes that were traditionally eaten by people. And some of the seeds are quite rare. They were saved and found in tombs and caves, and they are grown out again, so people of today can enjoy them. Unfortunately, you know, I believe that not many of these squashes are actually available for people to buy in the stores. There's only like a few kinds. You can maybe get butternut, acorn, kabochi squash sometimes, but there's just such a variety here. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, the Heirloom Expo is here to share people the different varieties of squashes. Hopefully they take it to the next level and have squash tastings because they all taste a little bit different. And some squashes will grow better or worse uh, depending on where you live. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at another uh, nice display they have this year that's new that I haven't seen before. It's actually their display on the heirloom corns. So this is the area with a display of all kinds of heirloom corn. And you know, we think of corn, we think of some white sweet corn that you pick up or some yellow corn that you pick up. These are like super sweet corn varieties that really never existed without hu like major human intervention. But anyways, you could see here on this display table like all kinds of beautiful heirloom corns like I particularly like some of the dark black corns but totally amazing they have some really nice displays I want to show you guys real quick like in the olden days they had like just uh, trunks with the uh, seed stores it kind of looked like this it's kind of a cool way to display all your seeds but they just have really nice displays showing all kinds of different kind of like uh, uh, heirloom corns now I want to show you guys this. This is kind of cool. This is a Coco de Mer, the world's largest seed. Now look at that closely. What does it look like? Okay. I'm not going to say that in my video. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Anyways, you know, much like every year at the Heirloom Expo, there's always a giant pumpkin contest. And as you guys can see me, there's totally a lot of different uh, giant pumpkins over there. I think the largest one this year was like 1,400 pounds. And it might pay for you guys to grow the next largest pumpkin because this year they gave away the first prize who grew the largest pumpkin was $2,500. So you can make some good money. Now I think the second place was $1,250. But nonetheless, you know, people really get into their giant pumpkins. <laughs> I'm not so much into growing giant stuff, but hey, check last year's episode. I have an episode actually interviewing some people that grow giant vegetables uh, if you want to do that. <laughs> Anyways, they have lots of different heirlooms, including lots of different heirloom tomatoes. And uh, you know, this is the display, because I mean, I seriously have walked this show like three times, like walk around everything. 
to like spot things that I really want to share with you guys in my episode because I have limited time in the video. But one was this, like right here. In a 2013, a Baker Creek did a nutritional study on tomatoes. So this is kind of really cool. Like on the bottom was a vine ripened hybrid and this is just like a store-bought uh, tomato and you can see the bricks, it was 5.36. Uh, the percentage of uh, lycopene was 6.6 .6 parts per million, the potassium, the acidity, the vitamin A, and the vitamin C. So uh, clearly the BRICS was 5.36, that's pretty low. The highest BRICS was like 8.55 on a black icicle. So if you want a really sweet tomato, grow a black icicle. But at the same time, if you want the most amount of lycopene, which is 21.14 parts per million on an indigo apple uh, tomato, that's one of those uh, nice purple style uh, tomatoes, really high compared to the standard store-bought one was 6.6. .6. So literally you're gonna have, you know, roughly uh, three and a half times more lycopene uh, than store-bought by growing your own. And likewise, potassium, 3,708 parts per million on the black icicle. And uh, let's see, on the 2712 on the store-bought. But it's kind of cool just to see all the different varieties of tomatoes and how much lycopene, how much vitamin A or vitamin C was in there. The winner on the vitamin C was the uh, indigo apple at 39.55 milligrams. So the indigo apple, you know, that one in several categories. So if you're only gonna choose like small varieties of tomatoes to grow and you're not gonna grow like a whole, all these different kinds, I would encourage you guys to grow like some of these darker ones that got the uh, nice uh, purple slash black in there. Generally, they're gonna be higher nutrients, which is gonna translate, hopefully, if you're eating your fruit and vegetables you grow into better health. So uh, let's go ahead and continue on and see what I could find at this year's Heirloom Expo. One of the thing I, <clears throat> one of the thing, <clears throat> One of the things I think is sad when you walk into the grocery store, you might find, you know, a handful of varieties of apples, but really that's just a pittance or a spit in a bucket compared to all the varieties of apples that are out there. And I like this, the display here from Gold Ridge Farms. Uh, they grow all kinds of heirloom apples and actually they sell their heirloom apples uh, in local stores. I think they sell in Whole Foods and you could go buy them from them directly. But they have so many different kinds. I mean, this is called Cinnamon Spice Apple from England, 1931. And it probably has like cinnamon overtones. They have Winter Banana, like Jonathan, Cox, Orange Pippin, Tideman's Late Orange, Ashmead's Kernel. Like all these apples are so unique and different. And unfortunately with today's modern food system, you know, they're reducing the amount of varieties that you could buy because they're selected for certain characteristics one of which is shippability. Like some of these apples are like soft apples. They will not handle transport, they will not handle shipping. They'll be mush and the farmer will lose their money. So, you know, for that reason, you should grow your own apples. Plus we need to keep the genetic diversity on the planet alive. One of my favorite exhibits every year at the Heirloom Expo is the California Rare Fruit Growers, right? And if you guys live in California, and even if you don't, you wanna check out their website. It is a wealth of knowledge, crfg.org. And uh, you know, they're always, they have local chapters around the state, which you could go to and you know, you, it's a great resource for collecting different kinds of fruit varieties, uh, cuttings, uh, plants, and just talk to people who are growing the fruits that you wanna grow. Uh, you know, every year on their display they have different things. This year they got some uh, Burbank spineless cactus. Here they have some yacone, one of my favorite uh, root crops, which in some cases are actually sweeter than some fruits. <laughs> so they're promoting it here. Plus they have, oh, this one, this one's really cool. This is called the pen dragon apple. And it's supposedly, it's, a, it's the healthiest apple according to a research study. Now, you know, of course, uh, of cultivated varieties, it's probably one of the healthiest, but of course, some of the wild fruit, you know, that may not be as palatable or taste as good, you know, in general, the wild foods tend to be higher nutrition than modern cultivated varieties. That being said, that's the first time I've learned about the uh, Pendragon apple. But yeah, they have so many different uh, fruits here on display. And the cool thing is, if you come to the Heirloom Expo, the best day to come always is the last day, right? Because <laughs> the last day, a couple hours before the end of the show, uh, they sample out all this fruit and that's the time to be here. <laughs>
All right, let me know what you guys think about this. This is, a, they have a pet squash adoption. So you can, or actually kids can, adopt their own pet squash. <laughs> uh, this is sponsored by the Enchanted Garden Mobile Project. They're outside and actually I, uh, I, I adopted a squash earlier today. <laughs> But yeah, it's good to get kids involved with um, you know, learning about food and I'm glad that every day uh, children under 18 here can come to this event for free. The other thing that's amazing is that this event is a not-for-profit event, so all the money collected uh, that's, you know, that's over and above their costs to put on is donated to a, you know, a, a school so they can teach gardening and teach kids about real food. Uh, over here I want to show you guys a really cool display. Uh, this is the display of an Exotica rare fruit tree nursery. If I remember, I'll put a link down below to the video I made at Exotica. But they basically have all kinds of different exotic fruits on display. This is the first year actually that uh, there's an exotic fruit display here at the Heirloom Expo and I'm quite glad for that because frankly, you know, a lot of people may not be familiar with some of the different tropical fruits. And let me tell you, some of the tropical fruits are amazing. So, you know, I want you guys to eat diversity of foods in your diet. In this area, they have all different kinds of heirloom tomatoes. So this year they've set up like round tables and they've kind of like uh, made wedges of the different kinds of cherry tomatoes. And also they have uh, eggplants and peppers on display. I'm not gonna go over all the different varieties. I have done that in previous years. So once again, check my videos down below. But I did want to point out this table over here with a very cool fruit that I want you guys to know about. So a cool table they have this year that they haven't had in prior years is a table for the bitter melon. And I want to encourage you guys to grow some bitter melon. The bitter melon is such a healing food and unfortunately most Americans don't know about it or don't know what it is or don't know how to use it. But Asians know the bitter melon and use it in not only their food but also for medicine. It says here, the bitter melon, the bitterer, the better. From a simple stir fry to a green smoothie, bitter melon can be incorporated into your diet and given an exquisite bitter taste and health benefits such as lowering blood sugar and preventing diabetes, improving the health of your vision as it provides about a third of the recommended dose of vitamin A, improving and aiding the liver in cleansing the body and removing harmful toxins, reducing inflammation, reducing the size of tumor and killing cancer cells, helping the body to lose weight and strengthening the immune system. Such an amazing fruit. And I like to eat them, uh, you know, when they're uh, most ripe. And one of my favorite parts to eat of the bitter melon, uh, besides the skin is actually inside, uh, there's like a little fruit pulp, it's red fruit pulp around the seed. So I love to just chew off that red fruit pulp, spit out the seed, and then I plant the seed for next year. So now we're walking down a row with uh, squash on one side and melons on the other side. You know, uh, the melon display, not quite as big as in prior years, although there's still plenty of giant, amazing watermelons. And they do have a watermelon sampling area that you can go to uh, during certain times of the day to try some of these watermelons. And check out this watermelon right here. This one's called the Ancient Watermelon. And it says, uh, seeds were found in a sandstone cave in Arizona in 1928 by Art Combe. Uh, the handle shape is believed to be a trait selected by ancient Native Americans for easier carrying. Found in a woven bottle made by an ancient Anasazi basket makers, maybe hundreds or even thousands of year old. So that's this guy, the ancient watermelon. When's the last time you guys ate an ancient watermelon? The cool thing at the Heirloom Expo is that every fruit vegetable or plant has a story and I like that they try to explain some of the story on certain you know uh, chalkboards on some of the fruit they can't possibly do it on everyone but I think you know like the story is really a big important part of the actual fruit itself and I want you guys to get familiar with some of the stories of some of the foods you eat like where do they come from why are they here why do we eat them today and I'll show you guys a way in just a little bit how you guys could basically get the full story on all these different fruits. If you're here, you get it for free, but un unfortunately you guys aren't, so you might have to pay a couple bucks for shipping and, uh, and for it. So the last exhibit in the exhibit hall that I wanna share with you guys is this one right here, and this is actually a native bee exhibit. You know, they got a poster with different kinds of bumblebees and other native bees. And I wanna encourage you guys to have, you know, some kind of bee house and attract wild bees to your garden because they can help you pollinate your crops and it's also very easy and very simple to make a bee house right and simply I mean here's some of the ones you could buy right it has basically just like these uh, uh, holes in the wood with a little top with like these 
uh, cardboard tubes. Very important to get the right size tube, right? Different sizes tubes will attract different kinds of bees on there. I mean, here's a commercially available one, but it doesn't even have to be that hard. I mean, here's basically just a box made with like a two by four with a whole bunch of uh, holes drilled in. Like actually this is a four by four here, you know, to uh, get some native bees uh, in your life and in your garden, you know. Unfortunately, nature is dying out at alarming rates. We're losing all kinds of different species due to man-made chemicals, pesticides, and other toxins. So I want to encourage you guys to foster some nature in your garden. They can help you out. So now I'm in the garden courtyard area, and every year this area has the biodynamic uh, garden area and does education about biodynamics. Last year I didn't care for it too much. This year it's maybe a little bit better, but I would encourage you guys to check the link down below where actually it was the nicest it's ever been. And that year I, did, I decided to film in this area and that was an excellent video. So I mean, I, I have high hopes that this area always is gonna be as good as that year. Hasn't happened yet. Uh, this area is sponsored by Malibu Compost and I did uh, sit in on a talk uh, by uh, Malibu Compost. And you know, in general, I'm not a big fan of manure-based compost or just using manure because it could be contaminated. In, in the talk, uh, Malibu Comp Compost talked about how bad some of the manure can be with different uh, pesticides and herbicides in there. But you know, I'm glad this year, Malibu took the time to make a sign that says, you know, Malibu Compost is a GMO-free, pesticide-free, biologically active, and nutrients are available, right? Unfortunately, most compost companies, especially manure-based compost companies, um, do not do all the testing uh, that Malibu does. So I would, I would caution you guys against any kind of manure-based compost. If you guys are gonna get one, make sure you know the source. Make sure you know the cows, the horses, or the animals that it came from, what were being fed to them, and all that stuff, so that you won't have any contamination in your uh, garden. So in this area, they have some uh, different uh, Malibu compost for sale, also biodynamic seeds, and they have a few different, well, they're having a wine tasting going on right now, and they have a few displays, maybe with uh, some beehives and some just plants, and this is basically just a general kickback area. Um, you know, they're not really doing a whole lot of education in this area and, you know, I mean, that's what I hope they would do. I mean, I could come here and look and see some things going on and kind of know what the point they're getting across, but I wish there's definitely more signage to especially like ch children and other people here that may not know as much about biodynamics. Like in previous years, they'd have really good signage and all these different things. And this year, it's just kind of like, you know, just kind of mellow and hanging out in this area. All right, so now I'm outside. It's getting later in the day. The sun's uh, about to set, but I want to show you guys a few things before it gets too dark. Uh, this is basically the outside main, kind of like Main Street, <laughs> USA, or Main Street here at the Heirloom Expo. There's like nice uh, tables underneath trees for seating and lots and lots of uh, food booths here so that it, anybody on virtually any kind of diet could find something to eat here. And that's one thing I will say about this year's event is that there's more food booths than there have been in previous years to provide almost an unlimited kind of options for people to get healthy food, healthy plant-based food, even junk food. Anyways, I want to go into uh, Finley Hall and this is the, uh, the kids area. And this, this place is swarming in the morning and that's usually when the kids come. So if you don't like kids, you want to avoid kids, don't come in the morning time. Wait till come a little bit in the afternoon when some of the school field trips have gone, right? Anyways, uh, I've waited to the end of the day. So uh, it's pretty empty in there so I could uh, show you guys around. So this is inside the kids educational area. There's a lot of things going on. So many different displays like here's, here's one, ethnobotany children's garden with uh, all kinds of cool, uh, uh, things that kids could learn and do. In addition, over in this area, it's kind of closed down right now, is the watermelon tasting area. I think that only goes on for a few hours during the middle of the day when like most people are here. I don't know. I got to sample some today. They weren't the highest bricks I've ever tasted. And then uh, back there they have like a little talks and stuff for the kids, uh, probably in the mornings mostly. And then they have a whole bunch of educational displays um, from different schools that come in and organizations. Uh, you know, to show what they're doing in their garden and how kids are learning and kids could come in and see what other kids are doing. And you know, I would encourage 
actually uh, every school in the nation should have some kind of gardening program to teach kids about growing foods, teach kids where food comes from, and to teach kids about eating real food. Because unfortunately, you know, most Americans are still eating processed junk foods that can have major detriments to the health, to your health, <laughs> and also, unfortunately, you know, to the health of the planet in the ways that they're being grown. Anyways, I walked this whole uh, room and there wasn't a whole lot in here that I really wanted to share with you guys, actually except one display that actually I really liked a lot. So the display I liked the most was this one, was the uh, Federated Indians of Grayton Rancheria. <laughs> and if you guys live in Sonoma County or even the area, <laughs> you might know that Grayton, they have a big huge casino. So this uh, display was probably funded by some of the proceeds from the casino. But nonetheless, I'm glad it's here because actually they took some thought into mind before creating this booth. <laughs> and they're teaching a lot of stuff. You know, I, I kind of don't like this fence right in front because it kind of makes you stop and not maybe, uh, doesn't it be so inviting into the booth? But really they have a lot of cool things going on that most people might walk by. But they have like a worm observation tower. So basically they just put like a clear piece of PVC with a, uh, a dark PVC in the middle with holes in it. They put worms in there and then the worms could come out and you could kind of see the worms eating and doing their business literally in the tower. I don't see if I see any active. I see like a few like worm tracks in there, but, uh, but that's pretty cool. And then this is like an interactive. And then the next thing they had was uh, how you can identify your soil type by using a simple jar test. And you can see like the layers of a uh, sediment in there, the sand settles to the bottom. Then there's the silt layer, the clay layer and the water layer. So that was really cool. And then uh, here they have a thing on uh, edible soil and the, just the different kinds of uh, soil. And then over here, this is really cool. They had like a basic seed bomb recipe ins instructions on how you guys could make your own seed bombs basically using mud. No, these are not cookies. These are seed bombs. You know, it'd be kind of cool for somebody to actually have a seed bomb like a demonstration station so kids could actually get their hands muddy <laughs> and make seed bombs and take home and spread them out and they should contain like wild or uh, more wild edible foods in the seed bombs. And then here's how to make a bee condo. So, you know, I talked about it a little bit earlier, but once again, this is just a piece of wood with holes drilled into it. Um, you know, that they, they probably could have drilled a little bit better <laughs> for uh, uh, solitary bee homes. They talk about you know, how to make your own uh, chamomile tea by picking the blossoms and then also how to make a calendula oil by basically just uh, picking calendula flowers and then uh, putting them in some kind of olive oil to extract the goodness. So yeah, I mean, that was kind of like the most learning uh, booth that I liked the most because you could kind of learn a lot. A lot of them, a lot of booths and uh, exhibits here in this area were just kind of showing uh, what they're doing and maybe without a big learning emphasis. So I really kind of like this and these are the kind of booths I like because when I come to events like this, I want to learn and you know, just being at this event, I've learned several things that I actually didn't even know about uh, this year. One was a talk by Wendy Pham. She's another uh, popular YouTube personality and, and has a blog and all this stuff, but she taught me about a new uh, Vietnamese green that I could grow and eat. So that was fun. All right, now we're outside before the sun goes down. I want to show you guys a few more things here in the kids area. I'm glad that they have actually a big expanded kids area because kids, they got lots of energy. And so they could be running around in this field and actually they're still running around way over there. They've got a giant pumpkin and play area that kids love to play in. In addition, there's like a big sand, like play sand area for kids to play in. But uh, you know, during the day when all the field trips come, you know, they had different stations uh, where uh, kids could do different activities and learn different things. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the thing that I want to show you guys in here is uh, this. And what this is, this is basically like a little, uh, it's like a tiny house, but instead of being a tiny house on a trailer, it's actually a little greenhouse that it goes around the schools and does education. So uh, let's see what they got grown inside. So inside here, it looks like they're growing lots of basil and I think they're doing like uh, either, uh, yeah, probably either uh, probably aquaponics or hydroponics since they got a tank here. I'm not seeing any fish in there, so probably currently it's a hydroponic. And they just got some uh, dirt in here. You know, I, I personally wish this was probably looking a little bit better and had like more cool stuff growing, but uh, I'm glad that this goes around to schools and does lots of education and has some, uh, some basil growing at least. So to me, one of the main draws of the Heirloom Expo is all the education that goes on here, right? So there's uh, three main areas where they give uh, basically talks every hour. 
and they have uh, many, maybe like eight during the entire day on each day times three. So I think the hardest thing to figure out is actually what talk at what time you want to go to, right? So yeah, all kinds of different talks. Like this hall specializes in like a non-GMO and today they had one on a responsible fiber. Many people don't realize the problems with the clothes you're wearing that are not produced organically, all the dyes and all the crazy chemicals used in the clothing. I mean, there's a book I think called Killer Clothing. <laughs> so you gotta watch out. Anyways, uh, outside this hall also is the display right behind me. And this is every year the uh, Exotica Fruit Tree Nursery drives up from Vista, California. That's a good 10 hour drive or so uh, with all kinds of different rare, unique fruit trees and other plants so you guys could grow your own food at home. Now, if you guys want to buy some cool rare fruit trees and stuff at the Heirloom Expo, right? You guys want to come on the first day because after the first day and get here early in the morning because this place totally sells out like every year, like all the desirable stuff is gone. Like the second day, they're like totally out of so many things that they had on the first day. So here they have a display of like a lot of different kinds of tropical and exotic fruit that you may, you may be able to grow at home. And then over here, they have some really good price on certain plants. Like over here, they got bananas. One gallon banana plants, only $10, amazing prices. You know, they got uh, passion fruit vines, $5. And if you're gonna get this one, get the yellow one. I like that uh, better than the standard uh, purple. They got moringa, and they got sapotes, and mountain apples, star apples, coffee bushes. Hey, if you guys drink coffee, grow your own coffee, right? All kinds of cool stuff. Lychee, oh look, there's a lychee on the, on the tree here. <laughs> lychee fruit, also they got long on trees here macadamia nuts i've seen macadamia nut trees grow really well in like fremont soursop that's a real healing uh, fruit this day and age and yeah oh little jackfruit trees i don't know that i'd do that here in northern california but yeah all kinds of different fruit trees and that's what i like about the heirloom Exo, right there's so many different vendors that bring all kinds of cool unique rare and exotic plants you're not going to find all in one place at one time during the year. So one of the things that's really cool about the Heirloom Expo was that literally around the clock, even until like nine o'clock at night, <laughs> and the sun's set and everybody's, everybody's pretty much left, <laughs> the band is still playing on, so there's always band music. They're taking a little break right now. Uh, but what I thought I'd do next for you guys is actually take you guys and show you guys some of the uh, outdoor booths before or outdoor exhibitors. Before it gets too dark, there's just like a handful that I wanna show you guys before I head indoors and share with you guys some cool indoor exhibitors this year. A lot of the exhibitors, uh, you know, always come year after year and they don't really have anything new. So if that's the case, then I don't try to put them in the episode. So I only try to show new, unique, interesting, and cool things that I like in this part of the video. In every nook and cranny of the Heirloom Expo, there's always something going on. And in this area here, they got a really amazing chalk art. This is just like, just, I mean, it's literally taken a day and a half, or actually almost two days to this point right here. It's just amazing. Oh, it says, grow vitamins at your kitchen door. <laughs> and fruits or vegetables or vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and really important to eat. And they have uh, several different uh, pictures in progress. Anyways, let's continue on. And now I'm gonna show you guys the Sustainable Agriculture Strip. That's the S-A-S -S for short. And this is all about like more sustainable agriculture, organic and you know, things that I would use in my garden, such as the uh, Organic Solution Premium Worm Castings, right? I did an episode on them. I'll put a link down below if I remember. Uh, they kind of went home for the day. Of course, next we got the uh, Boogie Brew booth with Josh himself. Hold on, it's not just Josh, it's the Caliwana hey, crew. High fives for the Caliwana crew. How are you? We love Boogie Brew, we love you and the Caliwana crew too. <laughs> yeah. They got some amazing deals and if you guys come here with cash, you guys could score some crazy good deals on the Boogie Brew, but unfortunately you guys aren't here to get the deals. So then I got you guys a hookup. You want to check out boogiebrew.net slash GYG. That's my special page to get you guys some uh, discounts. Maybe not quite as good as they got here, but uh, you know, they'll be shipped and delivered right to you. Anyways, I got a nice display of, uh, you know, different things growing on, compost, tea brewing, also their, uh, their garden filters. And I do encourage you guys to have some kind of filtration on your water and don't just use city water to water your garden. The next booth in the uh, uh, 
Sustainable Agriculture Strip is the C90, and this is a one way to add the very important trace minerals into your garden. You know, of course, I like the rock dust, which adds up to 70 different trace minerals. But of course, the C minerals, let's not forget them, they contain up to 90 different trace minerals, and they have a product, you know, that's uh, as simple as this. This is the uh, unrefined sea salt, sea agri ink product. Contains up to 90 different trace minerals. And uh, I like to use that as a foiler feed and also as a soil drench. Uh, make sure you mix it in proper dilution ratios. It's one teaspoon to one gallon and only use that like once uh, every two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. Don't use it so much because there is a sodium content in there and that can harm your plants like it can harm you. And I don't encourage you guys to eat excess sodium in your diet. Next booth here is uh, organic egg products, right? And this is the very product I use. This is a uh, super plant food, 1511 plus iron and zinc. And this is basically a amino acid based fertilizer. This is probably one of my favorite fertilizers. Now it is a source from fish. It is uh, organic certified. And I like to use this for a, a good nitrogen boost to my plants, especially if they're having some transplant shock after I plant them. You know, it seems that almost every year my peppers always after I uh, transplant them into the ground, they turn a bit yellow. I hit them with this stuff, they're totally fine. And uh, furthermore, you know, if your soil is devoid, like you bought some bag soil from Home Depot, that stuff after a couple years is really low in the nitrogen uh, based on my soil testing that I've done because that's what happened to me. So I started hitting it with this like every uh, maybe once or two weeks, once or twice a week. No, no, one every week or every other week, sorry. And then, uh, you know, my growth has improved markedly. And uh, in addition, they have things here like the uh, rid bugs. And this is an organic insecticide and it's basically based around um, essential oils. And then, oh, they got this new one, man, kelp green. And I haven't tried this. It's a plant biostimulant. I'm going to have to pick some of this up and take it home and try it in my garden. But yeah, you know, uh, seaweed products, really good for your garden. I would encourage you guys to get those in uh, to your garden. So another booth I wanted to get out to you guys actually is uh, uh, Moms Across America, Empowered Moms and Healthy Kids. And, uh, you know, Moms Across America, what they're trying to do is like, pissed off moms all got together who are like anti-GMO, pro-organic, you know, are together and going around literally in the RV educating people around the country about eating natural organic food and getting rid of the processed junk foods and all the GMO foods and processed foods that are now appearing in the food supply. And actually I was happy actually when uh, the moms across America came up to me and said, John, we watch you and they took a picture with me. <laughs> so really cool. You know, we are all needed in this movement to get the world to be a healthier place, to get rid of GMOs, tell them we are not buying your stuff and to grow organic. So my favorite outdoor booth this year is right here. This is actually called the Grub Grown. <laughs> and what it is, you guys probably can't see it from this side, but basically if you kind of go to the side here, you can see that this is literally like, actually what it looks like, it looks like one of those Harbor Freight trailers maybe. <laughs> and then uh, they basically just uh, bi uh, welded on different kinds of framing and stuff so they could basically fit nursery flats on there right and they grow all these plants at their home nursery and then they put them on the uh, trailer here and take it down to their local farmers market in the chico area so if you guys are lucky to live up in the chico area check out your local farmers market for the grub grown plants they're uh, gyg certified <laughs> well anyways i was here and saw some of their plants and that they they transported here and the reason why i like them a lot is number one i mean what a cool idea to take a trailer and you know build these racks so you could fit nursery plots on them and take them to your local farmers market. So I know a lot of you guys that grow food may be looking for uh, additional income. You know, you guys could easily do this and provide a service of plant starts for people. You know, I know a lot of you guys may start things from seed, but sometimes I'm too busy to do that. So I love to support, you know, local growers whenever I can. And plus, this just gets people interested in growing food. Plus how they're doing it at Grub Grown, they got nice prices. But the cool thing is they got so many different varieties, like some that you'll have a hard time finding anywhere. Like these are alpine strawberries. These are like the small little strawberries that you can't find the plants too often. And they're so tasty. I mean, all kinds of just rare things, bronze, fennel, um, skirt, oh, this one, yeah, skirt. You're not gonna find skirt too many places. Uh, Mexican, several different kinds of tarragon, Mexican, French tarragon. Um, oh man, right here, Herba Stella, that's what they call it. 
This is also known as a buckhorn plantain. They have a nice name to it, so you don't know exactly what it is. Oh, and they got the perennial walking onions. Super easy to propagate, grow, and once you have them, once you grow them once, you're not gonna get rid of them probably. Then they got the epizote. I mean, I, I just really like places that have a lot of cool different plant starts that you literally gotta really look hard to find some of them. But here at the Heirloom Expo, you know, you'll find different growers with all different kinds of cool stuff. Anyways, I think the last, so if you wanna learn more about them, you could check them out at uh, Grub Grown, and uh, they're in uh, Chico, California, and it's sherry at grubchico.org. But yeah, they don't ship their plants or anything, so if you're not in Chico or passing through, you probably won't be able to get any of these cool plants that they are showing today. Anyways, the last part of this episode, I wanna go ahead and in, into the exhibit hall, the main exhibit hall, and show you guys a handful of booths uh, that I like this year. All right, so now we're inside the exhibit hall, and it's uh, later in the day, so I'm so kinda glad for that. So it's like kinda quiet in here, because before earlier today, it was like totally too many people. Um, but one of the, my favorite booths is uh, Harmony, uh, farms are a local nursery that sells all kinds of different organic products including many different plants uh, some of which they've actually brought here to sell and you know they have lots of different cool stuff they have things that you're not going to find they had like uh, the ugni berry which is one of my favorites they had like uh, tea a uh, standard sachi tea and then they, today they have um, uh, yerba mate tea all different kinds of cool stuff so make sure you check them out now you know if you're not able to catch them here at the heirloom expo that's all right they have a store in petaluma or no i'm sorry in sebastopol i'll put a link down below if i remember uh to the video i did at their place actually several years ago so now i want to show you guys a few booths inside the hall that i like uh the first one was pretty cool was ecology action and john jevons grow biointensive they always have a cool booth doing cool stuff they're handing out some uh, seeds earlier what not, they do a lot of education. I hope to get up there and visit their facility and show you guys. But probably, you know, last year and this year, uh, the Diablo Valley Horticulture um, booth at Di Diablo Valley College, you know, this is always a showstopper for me, right? They always got some really cool plants here that you're really not gonna find anywhere else. And that's why I like this booth a lot. Hi again. <laughs> And so this year, I don't know if they have any more. Oh, they have, they have a couple left. But you wanna get this plant right here. This is one of my favorite fruits in the whole world. It's the Jamaican cherry or Montinja. I thought I'd only ever seen this in Hawaii, but they're saying, you know, you can grow this with uh, proper care, even in, at Di Diablo Valley College like they're doing. Of course, you might need to put it in a pot and bring it indoors or put it in a greenhouse in the winter time. But it's amazing to even have this growing. And actually, look, oh my God, there's a fruit on there. These fruits taste amazing. They taste, taste like Captain Crunch cereal. They're, they're insane. I mean, they always have, oh, Suriname cherries, key apples. Uh, oh, these guys were really cool. Check this out. This mo like, mo might look like a coleus or some like non-edible plant. This is an edible plant that I've never seen it before in any of my travels. This is actually a, a variegated shiso. So shiso grows really well for me. And this may, this may never go to flower, I'm not sure, because they, they are propagated by cuttings. But yeah, this is so beautiful, and at the same time so beautiful, so edible, and at the same time also super antioxidant rich with the anthocyanins from the purple pigmented colors. Oh my God, I'm gonna pick up a couple of these to take home. I love this. Hopefully it'll go to seed and I'll be able to have the seeds of these guys. These are just one of the most beautiful plants I've seen here at this at event and it's also edible. So if you guys aren't lucky enough to be here to get some of the cool plants they have, right, I would encourage you guys to go out to their plant sales that they have at a regular basis. I'll announce the next few ones coming up, but it's a dvchorticulture.org. Check out that website, get on their email list so they'll, they'll notify you when they're having them because they can only bring a small selection of all the different plants they have here, right? And also if you're looking to get into horticulture and learn about this stuff, you probably wanna go to Dino Valley College. They're growing some good stuff, propagating them, and they probably have an excellent program there. Anyways, their upcoming sale dates are September 29th and 30th, October 20th and 21st, December 1st and 2nd. And uh, yeah, check them out. Visit them down there in uh, uh, 321 Golf Club Road in Pleasant Hill, California, lot nine, free parking. Pick up some of their amazing plants so you guys can get some of these rare genetics and have some amazing fruits and vegetables in your garden. So the next booth I want to share with you guys is actually the Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. And if you guys are here, you would get the advantage of being here, which is this. Please take one, right? This is their annual 
uh, super huge seed catalog. They have like a free one they give you that's like thin, but this is like the phone book style seed catalog. Uh, normally they sell them, but at this event they're giving away for free. And this is amazing. If you guys aren't at this, this event to get one for free, you guys should probably pick one of these up because check it out, man. They got like stories and stuff about, you know, uh, heirlooms and growing vegetables and their travels on how they collect the seeds and the employees. But the coolest thing is, I talked about this a little bit earlier, right? This book literally tells the story, right? Literally page by page. You can see all these beautiful pictures, a picture of every different seed, every different crop they sell in here, as well as a little story and tells you about the seed or crop. I mean, look at these beautiful pictures, right? If you guys eat plants, if you guys are interested in plants, you guys are interested in growing plants, right? So many cool pictures. You'll be aware of so many more foods that you never even knew existed on the planet. Plus, you might get excited about some of them. I mean, here's one the Sikkim cucumber. Look at that thing. It looks kind of gnarly. <laughs> but like so many different pictures of all the different fruits that you can grow in your garden. And I'm sure you'll find some that are really appetizing, delicious. Oh wait, there's a good section. Hardy Asian rice. So if you're interested in growing rice, grow some hardy Asian rice, oriental greens and cabbage. I mean, this is like the most complete seed catalog I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's insane and I'm gonna be sure to pick up a few of these. <laughs> Maybe a few to hand out too, but yeah, flowers and everything. So you can learn more about them at rareseeds.com to get your uh, whole seed catalog from Baker Creek. All right, next to the Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Booth, you might think they work for Baker Creek or something. They don't, actually they're down the street, well, a couple hours away. <laughs> Yeah, we are Missouri uh, natives like Baker Creek. This is Doug and Stacy with uh, Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. They're homestead homies. What's up? Hi. Yeah, you want to check out their YouTube channel if you haven't checked them out before. I mean, they do some gardening, but they go into like basically they're living off the grid, like no solar panels, all this kind of crazy stuff that I would probably never do because I got my <laughs> modern conveniences. I would at least have solar panels. I'll live off grid one day. Yeah, yeah. But they're still connected to the internet because they're so big on uh, social media these days with uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and like I think what daily YouTube videos right yeah we do daily YouTube videos we talk about our life living off grid we live in a log cabin in the Midwest uh, we have a 3,000 gallon gravity fed water system and basically we can shut the gates and be pretty self-sustainable right there on our property yeah. so it's good stuff cool so tell everybody how to get hold of you and uh, check you guys out so like uh, you can go to off grid with Doug and Stacy on YouTube we post videos there daily and then from there you can check out our show more tab and it'll take you to all of our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter That's links. That's my job. Yeah, <laughs> we'll tell them then. You can check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That's right. Everything's off here with Doug and Stacy, so it's really easy to use. And uh, we did have recently switched over to raised beds and stuff like that. We were farming with a team of Belgians on 10,000 uh, square foot garden. And through watching uh, John's videos, we switched <laughs> over to um, raised beds. And we're even trying the uh, wood mulch system. So if you want to check out how that's working for us, uh, you can come check it out, get some updates, and see what works in the Midwest. Awesome, man. Yeah, it's good meeting you guys. I did an episode with them, so check their uh, channel for the episode that they did with me. Yeah. <laughs> so it is, I hope to get out and visit them in Missouri yeah. and uh, make some really cool videos at their place. Okay. So there's a lot of t-shirt vendors here selling organic t-shirts, but for sure my favorite one is Harvest and Mill Organic Clothing. And the main reason for that is besides having truly organic cotton shirts that aren't sprayed or dyed with any nasty chemicals, because even organic cotton shirts could be dyed with nasty chemicals, um, they got actually an edible shirt here, right? This is a Harvest and Mill organic clothing. And look, it's non-GMO cotton, and these are actually broccoli sprouts. They're growing out of the shirt. And if it was the last day, I'd actually eat them. <laughs> but I can't mess up the display because they still got to be here for tomorrow. But yeah, you're going to eat those. <laughs> tomorrow I will. <laughs> so I've saved the best for last. My favorite exhibitor at this whole uh, expo this year is actually the uh, Crop Swap booth. And what they do is they have a free app that I want you guys to download. And uh, John. here it is, man. What's up? Tell my people about Crop Swap pretty quick. Uh, yes, my app is Crop Swap. Basically, it is a free app to trade fruits and vegetables. These are all people on our app that have uploaded stuff they are growing. So this person has onions. Hey, I want to make a deal with the onions in your garden. Eh, I'll drive to you, do that, and then I simply can trade, you know, what you have um, from your garden to my garden, right? So this person has this kind of stuff, and look. I'm getting all these things and this is my garden and I make a deal 
and then it sends them a deal. And if they like it, they can uh, say yes, or if not, they're like, hey, can we change this? I want this many more things. Cool, so this basically allows you guys, when you have excess in your garden or things maybe you don't like to eat, like I grow a lot of eggplants because they grow easily, even though I don't eat so much, I have always extra. I can trade it with somebody that's growing, I don't know, strawberries or something else that I like to eat more. And this is a free app for you guys, so I really want to get the word out about this app so people start using it because the app is only as good as uh, you know users there are. So I want to get like everybody using this app. I mean, the other thing why I like this app, besides just trading things, you could actually sell. This makes it an easy way so you guys could actually sell some of your excess produce for cash to people in your local area, right? So. Uh, Daniel, I, w I visited uh, Daniel here at his place in yeah. LA. Yes. What? You're, I said you're the man. Yeah. And he informed this whole app, by the way. This has John Kohler's fingerprints all over it. <laughs> but uh, I visited his place and actually he, he uh, got rid, rid of his place. He doesn't have a garden anymore. He's actually traveling in an RV or something. Yeah, dude. We're, <laughs> we're traveling in two vans. I sold all my possessions and we're making a, a, a gardening show that will not be as good as John's. But we're just going to show cool stuff happening and tell people about the app to try to get people to trade food. That's amazing, man. I mean, this is a essential part of the movement that is needed is to connect people within the movement. Maybe you have a neighbor down the street from you that's growing stuff, but if you guys, and you guys didn't know, but if you guys are both on the crops, I'm like, oh my God, this dude down the yes. street is growing something that I need and stuff, and that's, that's what happened. So, yes. How can somebody download the Crop Swap app? Dude, by the time this goes live for you, just look up Crop Swap in the App Store. Is that about right? Just look up Crop Swap so in the App Store. So it's iPhone and Android. Right now it's just iPhone, because we're uh. our, our, but we're a startup with just two people. So we're <laughs> raising money. We're basically putting this out there, and we're hopefully going to get some traction, start a Patreon so we can fund the Android. Android is the first thing we're going to fund when we have money. For sure. So, so buy a cheap old iPhone. Wait, <laughs> what, what version? What version what iOS do you need? need? You could do it with the six, six S. Yeah, five. S, yeah, yeah, four. It starts at five S. So yeah, five yeah. S, they changed everything. Yeah, all right. So yeah. You can do it, and then yeah, yeah. we'll be on. We'll, we'll have a website. Yes. We'll, we're basically going to do every for everyone. Technology. We're not trying to be exclusive. We're just us. We're, we're not taking corporate money, so we have to do this. <laughs> so like can this somebody, way. if somebody really believes in you, can they give you guys donations totally. to keep you guys going? How do they Thank do that? You, That'd be rad. We have our website, which is cropswapapp.com. You can buy T-shirts like the one I'm wearing right here. Anarchy. Anarchy, <laughs> mother trucker. Um, or yeah, you can you can make little donations to our website as well. That's very kind of you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so check out that app if, if you got an iPhone. If your wife has it, put it on her phone without her, without telling her. Don't tell her. Or, 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 or husband or wife, whatever way yeah, it goes. Whatever you're into. Yeah, whatever it Don't goes. Check or... the text messages, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I think it's a great. I'm going to install it on my phone and, and get running with this as soon as it's up and going. And hopefully, you know, this will get around and more people will use it so that we could connect more people and get more local food into people's hands and get it eaten and used and uh, get value out of it, you know, because there's always times when there's excess. So uh, any final words that you'd like to share with anybody before we go today? Absolutely. I mean, if you're a Growing Your Greens viewer, like you have to know this app was created with this in mind. I mean, part of the app is we have, you can like tag your vegetables. So this one has like rainwater and filtered water and compost tea, mycorrhiza, compost, worm castings, trace minerals, which we know where I learned about trace minerals from. So we want you to be able to tag your vegetables with the cool things that you're doing. Because even if you get something from Whole Foods, Organic doesn't mean anything. Organic just means it doesn't have pesticides. But there's people that are beyond organic. We want to showcase those people and get those people trading. That's amazing. Oh my God. So now I can get some rock dust grown food wherever I travel. Oh. And this is what's needed to make the world a better place. Apps like this. Hey. So check it out. I'll put a link down below to their website. Also the app store so you guys can download it ASAP on your iPhone or other uh, iDevice. <laughs> All right. That's pretty much the end of my tour of this year's Heirloom Expo video for you guys, right? And I want to give you guys my opinions on the Heirloom Expo 2017. Number one, I want to say that this beat right here, it's actually called a Mammoth Red Mango Beat. Check this thing out. Man, it's huge. Oh my God, it's so heavy too. I, I think I need to improve my soil to grow better beets or at least maybe get that seed variety. But anyways, uh, every year I always have fun at the Heirloom Expo and I would encourage you guys to come at least one day, play a hooky off work if you guys need to come for one day or just come for all three. You know, there's so many different talks and lectures and I mean, education is probably one of the things I like most about this event. The other thing I like the most is connecting with other people, right? Every year the displays are a little bit different and to be honest with you, this year's, you know, um, I have seen years the Heirloom Expo displays were better than this year. 
That being said, people and everything are still great and there's always new and different things to see. So every year is just slightly different. So if you come once, you might want to come again because you'll see different people, hear different people. Um, the other thing is that there were way more food vendors this year, which is a good news if you buy your food here. I mean, I bring my food to eat every day and yesterday I blended up a salad and ate here. So that's good for a lot of people. Although the standard vendors, you know, there are less vendors uh, this year offering different things. There's a few empty tables. So I'd like to see all those filled with all different kinds of vendors bringing things that can help people grow more organic, natural, non-GMO food, including different seed companies. And of course, I like the plant starts the most when I could get some of these rare plants that you're literally not gonna find anywhere else. And I definitely found some really cool rare things that you're not gonna find anywhere else here at the Heirloom Expo. Um, the biodynamic section, I think, you know, wasn't quite as good as prior years. Um, but, you know, with everything, there's always pros and cons. But overall, I highly encourage you guys to come out to the Heirloom Expo every year to support them, their work, their mission, and more importantly, to educate yourselves about how important it is to eat heirloom and uh, organically grown, spray-free, non-GMO foods, right? And so, uh, yeah, every year I always have fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to let me know if I get enough thumbs up. I'll be sure to come back next year and make another detailed video. Also be sure to put some comments down below on things that you'd like me to film at next year's Heirloom Expo. My time is extremely limited here. I give a talk and then, you know, I walk the whole show to see what I'm gonna film. And then so many people are like grabbing me to talk to me because, you know, a lot of my viewers come and they meet me here. And it's always cool to hear good stories on how I'm changing people's lives, how I've motivated people to start gardening and can also motivate you guys if you've never seen me before. So uh, yeah, thumbs up. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes I've coming out about every three to four days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning in one of my episodes. Also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 1,300 episodes now, uh, 24 seven uh, for free for you guys to watch so you guys can educate yourself about all aspects on how to grow your own food at home for you and your family. So with that, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com coming at you from the 2017 Heirloom Expo. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing.